What's up guys? In this video we're gonna break down some practice questions about pulmonary function testing. Are you ready? Let's go! As I'm sure you're already aware, pulmonary function testing definitely is an important section of the TMC exam. And if you want to pass the exam, this is definitely a topic that you need to be familiar with. And hopefully, the practice questions in this video can help. But before we get into the questions, I just want to take a quick second to tell you about our Practice Questions Pro membership. How would you like to get new TMC practice questions like the ones in our videos sent to your inbox every single day? Well, the good news is now you can. Going through a new practice question every day may sound like a small thing, but over time, the knowledge that you'll gain will add up to huge results. So if you're interested in getting our premium practice questions delivered to your inbox on a daily basis, check out the link below at the top of the description. Now let's get into the practice questions. After reviewing the results of a patient's pulmonary function tests, you note that the FEV1, FVC, and total lung capacity are all reduced. The FEV1 to FVC ratio is normal. What is the interpretation based on these findings? A. Restrictive lung disease B. Obstructive lung disease C. Combined obstructive restrictive lung disease D. The test is invalid The correct answer is A. Restrictive lung disease This is your typical PFT interpretation question. You will see a few of these on the TMC exam. And to get them right, you must understand what each value means in regards to knowing the difference between an obstructive and restrictive disease. Since this patient has a normal FEV1 to FVC ratio, this indicates that there is not an obstructive disease. Remember, the FEV1 to FVC ratio would be decreased if there were an obstructive disease present. And since the FEV1, FVC, and TLC are all reduced, this indicates that the patient has a restrictive disease. So, now that we've broken this one down, we can see that the correct answer has to be A, restrictive lung disease. You are instructing a patient on how to perform an FVC maneuver. After looking at the results of an attempt, you determined that it took too long for the patient to reach the peak expiratory flow. Before another attempt, which of the following instructions should you give the patient? A. Take a deeper breath. B. Don't hesitate. C. Blast the air out faster. D. Blow out longer. The correct answer is C. Blast the air out faster. The question tells us that it took the patient too long to reach the peak expiratory flow, which means that the patient simply isn't exhaling fast enough. This can cause invalid results. In this case, you should simply instruct the patient to blast the air out faster at the beginning of the maneuver, and this will correct the issue. Taking a deeper breath will not fix the issue, and the patient doesn't seem to have a problem hesitating. Blowing out longer isn't going to fix the issue either. So, we know that the correct answer has to be C. Blast the air out faster. After reviewing your work order for the day, you notice that you have a patient with chronic bronchitis and another patient with emphysema. Which of the following PFT findings would you expect for these patients? A. Increased lung compliance. B. Decreased forced expiratory flows. C. Decreased total lung capacity. D. Decreased diffusing capacity. The correct answer is B. Decreased forced expiratory flows. 
The first thing you need to interpret in this question is that both diseases that were mentioned are obstructive diseases. Now you can proceed through the answer choices and use the process of elimination to come up with the correct answer. We know that with obstructive diseases, the patient will have decreased expiratory flow rates. Their FEV1 percentage will be less than 70%. Air trapping is also common in obstructive diseases, which will cause the total lung capacity to be increased. A decreased diffusing capacity tends to occur only in emphysema. So, by using what we know about obstructive diseases, as well as the process of elimination, you know that the correct answer has to be B. Decreased forced expiratory flows. Simple spirometry can be used to measure any of the following except A. Tidal volume B. Vital capacity C. Inspiratory reserve volume D. Residual volume The correct answer is D. Residual volume. A spirometer is a device that measures exhaled flow rates and volumes. It can be used to obtain measurements such as tidal volume, vital capacity, and FEV1. To get this one right, you have to know what residual volume is. Basically, it is the amount of air that is left in the lungs after a full exhalation. The residual volume cannot be exhaled, and because that is the case, it cannot be measured by simple spirometry. Tidal volume, vital capacity, and IRV all can be measured with a spirometer you would need a plethysmograph, aka a body box, in order to measure the residual volume. This tells us that the correct answer has to be D, residual volume. You are assessing a patient with chronic asthma. She has a slow vital capacity of 3,500 milliliters, and a forced vital capacity of 2,500 milliliters. Which of the following best explains this difference? A. Increased compliance during a forced expiration. B. Poor instruction by the previous respiratory therapist. C. Muscle fatigue during a forced expiration. D. Air trapping during a forced expiration. The correct answer is D. Air trapping during a forced expiration. The first thing that should stand out in the question is that the patient has asthma, which is an obstructive disease. And we know that air trapping is a commonality in obstructive diseases. If a patient has a significant difference between their slow vital capacity and forced vital capacity, this also indicates that air is trapped in the lungs when the patient exhales forcefully. Because the airways are obstructed or constricted, as with bronchospasm and asthma, all of the air can be expelled if the patient exhales slowly, it just takes longer. This explains why the values are lower with the forced vital capacity as compared to the slow vital capacity. None of the other answer choices really make sense in this situation, so we know that the correct answer has to be D, air trapped during a forced expiration. While reviewing the patient's medical record, you note that the FEV1 to FVC ratio is reporting as being severely reduced. Which of the following is most consistent with this finding? A. Pulmonary hypertension B. Morbid obesity C. Chronic asthma D. Pneumonia The correct answer is C. Chronic asthma To get this one right, you have to know that the FEV1 to FVC ratio is a measure of the percentage of a patient's vital capacity that can be expired in the first second of expiration. People with normal lungs can exhale at least 70% of their vital capacity within the first one second, which is the FEV1. When you see a reduced FEV1 to FVC ratio, that automatically tells you that there is an obstructive disease. And by using the C-Babe mnemonic, we can see that only one of the answer choices could possibly be correct, and it's C. We dive deeper into C-Babe and the obstructive diseases inside of our Hacking the TMC exam video course. Definitely check it out if you're interested.
But for this question, there is only one obstructive disease listed, so we know that the correct answer is C, chronic asthma. Your patient has an FEV1 to FVC ratio that is lower than predicted. Her forced vital capacity is also lower than normal as well. What is the most likely cause of these findings? A. A restrictive lung disease. B. An obstructive lung disease. C. Combined obstructive and restrictive lung disease. D. Normal test results. The correct answer is C. Combined obstructive and restrictive lung disease. Let's break this one down. The patient has a reduced FEV1 to FVC ratio, which certainly tells us that an obstructive disease is present. But they also have a reduced FVC as well. This tells us that they have a restrictive disease as well. So, combined, this patient has both an obstructive and restrictive disease. The correct answer is C, combined obstructive and restrictive lung disease. Alright guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.